You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. As always, very pumped to be hanging out with you and very appreciative that you're spending a few minutes of your day with us. Definitely. Are you thinking about trying to pick up a used Phantom? Well, there's a couple of pieces of information that we've said probably many times, although not in a organized or succinct methodology, and that we are going to clarify today uh, because... Mm. A lot of people are trying to pick up these uh, used phantoms, which I understand why. No one likes to pay for two drones when one older drone could do it all. Yeah, if only. It kind of rem- good old days. It kind of reminds me of uh, my current expedition. Yeah. Yeah, six-speed transmission, super glossy, lots of power, very responsive. I went home to DC and I got a brand new 2023 King Ranch. And that thing was nice on the inside. Looks slick. It looks, it looks slick, mm-hmm. but it ain't slick, Rob. <laughs> I'd saying. really like to know if there's anybody that out there that likes the eight, nine, ten speed automatic transmissions that everybody's using now. I would say the Toyota eight speed because my dad had the first gen of that in his Lexus LF or oh, LS. Yeah. Oh God, that was a 09 or a ten. I think that was the first first model year they had the 8 Because they had actually mastered the mechanics of making it not... Oh, the, the jumping of gears? Oh, I, oh, I can't stand it. Drives it drives me crazy. It's literally why I don't want to buy a new Expedition. In fact, I'm not going to buy one Ford. So that last commercial, I'm done, so. so I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not... Hey, you vote with your money nowadays because the regular votes may not make it in. So... <laughs> No comment. Yeah. And back to our regularly scheduled programming. This is a family program. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's get into today's show, which is about which Phantom to buy, because you might get stuck with a Phantom that doesn't work unless you learn how to fly. Let's hit it. Hey, guys. James from uh, a small island just near the UK. Just a quick question for you. First of all, thanks so much for um, all the content that you put out. And um, yeah, it's so valuable to anyone who's thinking about joining uh, your uh, subscription. It's the value in it is is phenomenal. So yeah, thanks so much. Really helps us build a lot of confidence, especially for someone like me who's just kind of starting out. The question I've got is regarding the Phantom 4 RTK. I bought this drone a couple of months ago, actually, and I'm just looking at setting up and getting into the mapping business. But I I constantly hear the Phantom 4 Pro or version 2 is the best drone for mapping, and it's just a great drone all around. Obviously, they're becoming increasingly hard to find uh, due to them being discontinued. I was wondering if I had a Phantom 4 RTK, could I disable the RTK unit and use an SDK remote to enable third-party apps that would allow certain flight missions, say, for example, orbits, because at the moment the RTK doesn't have a point-of-interest flight mission. So, um, yeah, I was wondering what your thoughts were on that, and hopefully we get a good backup for the Phantom 4 soon. (laughs) Thanks. Cheers, guys. Mm. Yes, indeed, James, though I wouldn't hold your breath. And uh, you had me at a small island in the UK. That sounds lovely mm. this time of year. Any mm. time of year. I don't know. Anyways, I would love to check that out someday. But um, Hi, I'm Robert Streams, and right now I'm thinking of driving a Porsche 911 around the curves of a beautiful island in Turbo, Northern. Turbo, let's be clear. <laughs> Excuse me, 911 Turbo, because <laughs> it's really, really fast, and I just <laughs> love the way it makes me feel, especially in my bottom when it hugs the corners. What can I say? So <laughs> check this out. Check this out. Talking about 911 Turbos, there's an auction site that uh-oh, I follow. Uh-oh, here this we is, go. This is well beyond my means, so that is not the point. But there's a 2010... 911 Turbo, it is gorgeous. GT4 RS? No, it's not a GT4. That's more like, that's like a racing Porsche, which I would take. But nonetheless, (laughs) (laughs) nonetheless, guess how many miles this car has on it? 2,000. (laughs) 
A <laughs> hundred and eleven miles. A hundred and eleven. Like, what's the freaking point? I mean, I would not buy that car. I would not buy that oh, car. I don't. Well, no. I, I'm just saying. Even if I had the money, I would not buy well, that car. Well, but my point is, somebody bought it and then just like, I don't know, put it up on the mantle, ripped it for a hundred miles, broke it, and then <laughs> said, "Now I'm going to dump this thing." <laughs> no, it's a 2010. I, wow. So I don't know. I guess people with a lot of money, maybe maybe his other car was a <laughs> poor, was a Ferrari. True crime. Why did this owner not drive this car? Okay, I've already <laughs> rambled long enough. I'm going to upset the viewers. <laughs> okay. Back to the regularly scheduled programming. So you cannot film uh, Rob's dream car with a Phantom 4 RTK. Let's just get that straight. Well, so. you could. Here we go. <laughs> Especially if you wanted to map it. No, I don't know. Okay, so can he... Well, let's just... Yeah, let's get to the question. Okay, SDK remote. Can you run third-party apps? Sure, the question is how long will they have orbit mode? The app that I used to teach people to run on that drone is no longer in existence. So you might get caught up in a conundrum of you might find an app that works with the SDK remote that works for a few months until there's a firmware update and it doesn't just work anymore. Look, when it comes to mapping... I know the, the RTK unit may not record a, a fixed position when the camera is in a high oblique mission like the orbit, but that's fine. You can still tie the results together with MTPs or GCPs. Okay. That said, this is where pilot skill comes into account. How many times, Rob, have we been talking about so many lower end pilots? I'm not saying you're lower end. I'm just saying that like in, if we're trying to label By a lower group, end, less experienced. Yeah. They yeah, done yeah. It not, they haven't not, done it enough, et cetera. It's not pejorative or negative. That said, these lower end pilots always want this perfect formula for how to do everything, right? When at the end of the day, really, if you have the right skills and systems, you can fix or do anything, right? It's like understanding the basic systems of a car. Um, you're able to do a lot more and not take your car and get reamed for fixing your car, right? Well, when it comes to this drone, if you can fly orbits, right? And we go over the orbital acquisition pattern in our mapping course, which we have had for... Oh, gosh. A um, few years. Yeah, longer than that, like five or six years now. Um, if you can do an orbit and you maintain the rules, so minimum three flight lines, we always talk about how much ground in the first set. We always talk about removing sky and a couple other rules. You could just do those orbits manually, man. You don't need an app to do it. You can do it. You set your photo to timed shot every two seconds. Don't go faster than five miles an hour unless it's more than a 350 foot radius. So the bigger the radius, the faster that you can go while still maintaining the overlap. But there's your solution. Boom. So the question, though, is if you have the opportunity to use the app to do the orbit, would you choose to do that over the manual orbit if if it allowed for it? No. Why not? Because I can do the orbit faster, more efficiently and cover areas that sometimes an elliptical orbit plan is going to miss. Okay. And also, most of these orbital plans are just a single flight line. You can't just do three flight lines like the like layers of a cake because that's ultimately what you're trying to do. Um, like in one flight, like you go no, boop and then... And then, boop, hi, and yep. Then boop. That's a, yes, and um, I do make those sounds when I fly too. I, I've heard you. That's I why mean, I, I go, just did it. Boop. <laughs> boop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just make this crap up. No, never, ever. <laughs> okay, but most people would probably use the system's orbit. Yeah, but the, you know, this is like literally one of the fundamental exercises we've had in mapping class for almost six years. Because to do manual orbit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yep. Okay. You cool. got to be good on the sticks because I can't tell you how many mapping jobs. It's like one in ten, and so it's not that many, but ten percent where the automation just fails, and and you have to fly it. And if you can fly it manually, guess what? You still complete the job. You still get paid. If you can't, you're screwed. So make well, a decision. How much margin for error is there? Meaning, if you're a little bit jerky, or how smooth do you need to be with mapping and orbits there's a lot of margin of error okay as long as you remove photos that have sky in it or let's say you yaw 90 degrees in the wrong direction as long as you remove those photos from the data set at when you're processing it's no big deal can ai do that for us yet remove no. the bad photos mm, that's a really good idea we need to figure that out. But anyways, so I, the reason I asked that question is because one doesn't need to worry about not being a, a really experienced pilot to make it work. Mm. No, you don't. Okay, what'd you just come up with? 
Um, it just, okay. So you've been asking me, uh, devil's advocate questions of the importance of manual orbits. Okay. There's this new photogrammetric software that everyone's talking about on Instagram called luma.ai. I'm going to do a short course on it while you're gone, by the way, it was like my plan to surprise you, but surprise. So, (laughs) so, surprise. surprise! (laughs) Um, but that said, everyone's talking about luma.ai. It creates the most lifelike 3D models that you can use for video purposes, not for measuring purposes. So we'll see how we'll see how long this app stays around because its real industrial use is is quite limited, but its visual use is is crazy limited. Okay, what is the best number one flight plan for Luma.ai? Orbit. Orbits, triple orbit. Like around me? Do you know Jason literally like listen to the uh, orbit exercises going on during the experience training? Use that, threw it in Luma, and he's like, it's the best model I've ever had. I'm like, crap in, crap out, Our baby. boy Jason? Yes. Really? That's yes. Cool. <laughs> that, uh, that just shows to you, just do it. Yeah. Be a doer. Uh huh. 100%. 100%. <laughs> so, anyway, um, by the way, Jason Flakes, thank you, sir, for, uh, uh, for coming out. It's to- good to see you, buddy. To the to the experience training, I have not been responding to your or anyone else's texts this last week because I have been mentally donezo and taking a break. So I will get back to everyone. Which but, Jason preaches, so I think he can appreciate that that we do that. Fire! I'm so using that. I'm so using that. <laughs> <laughs> he unplugged, Jason. He unplugged. Uh, yeah, on that bombshell, that's gonna do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. <laughs>